Paper Moon, a 1973 classic, unfolds a tale of unexpected partnerships and the art of survival during the Great Depression. This black and white gem, directed by Peter Bogdanovich, follows a con man and a young girl as they navigate their way through a series of hilarious, shocking, and occasionally heart-wrenching escapades. As the narrative weaves through dusty landscapes and quirky characters, you'll find yourself on a roller coaster of emotions. Have you ever wondered when you first experienced the charm of this movie? Or is there a particular scene etched in your memory? Stick around for some surprising facts and keep those eyes peeled for the funny, the shocking, and the sad moments that lie ahead. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to this cinematic journey? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Get ready for a trip down memory lane. Set against the backdrop of the Great Depression, the 1973 film directed by Peter Bogdanovich left an indelible mark on both the cinematic landscape and popular culture. The narrative follows the exploits of a con man and a young girl claiming to be his daughter as they navigate a world marked by hardship and uncertainty. During its time, the movie received widespread acclaim for its captivating storyline and stellar performances. Ryan O'Neill's portrayal of the coming Moses Prey and his on-screen chemistry with his real-life daughter, who played Addie Loggins, earned critical acclaim. The film resonated with audiences for its unique blend of humor, heart, and a poignant exploration of human connection in trying times. The impact extended beyond its initial release. At just 10 years old, the young actress won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, making her the youngest winner in Oscar history, a testament to the film's lasting influence. The iconic image of father and daughter con artists became a cultural touchstone, inspiring references in various forms of media over the years. Spin-offs and adaptations further solidified its legacy. The 1974 television series, also titled Paper Moon, attempted to capture the essence of the film but could not replicate its success. Despite the show's brief run, it showcased the enduring fascination with the characters and their adventures. Merchandise related to the film, including posters, dolls, and memorabilia, became sought-after collectibles, showcasing the enduring popularity of the story. Its impact on the entertainment industry was also evident in subsequent projects that drew inspiration from its narrative and character dynamics. In conclusion, the movie's reception during its time, marked by critical acclaim and audience appreciation, paved the way for a lasting impact on popular culture. Its influence extended beyond the silver screen, with spin-offs, adaptations, and merchandise contributing to its enduring legacy in the annals of cinematic history. In the creation of the 1973 film Paper Moon, a myriad of captivating behind-the-scenes stories and anecdotes surfaced, providing a glimpse into the dynamic world of filmmaking during that era. One noteworthy incident involves the impeccable chemistry between the lead actors Ryan O'Neill and his daughter Tatum O'Neill, which contributed significantly to the film's success. Despite being real-life father and daughter, their on-screen relationship brought forth a unique charm that resonated with audiences and added an authentic touch to the narrative. Behind the camera, director Peter Bogdanovich faced an unexpected challenge when he decided to shoot the film in black and white, a choice not frequently made in the early 70s. This decision, however, turned out to be a stroke of brilliance, as the monochromatic palette not only captured the period's essence, but also accentuated the film's nostalgic and timeless feel. In a more humorous vein, there were instances of spontaneous improvisation that led to some of the movie's most memorable moments. Tatum O'Neill's witty and spontaneous remarks, particularly in scenes with her father, often evoked genuine laughter from the cast and crew. These unscripted bloopers were embraced by Bogdanovich, adding an extra layer of authenticity to the film. Moreover, the film's production faced budget constraints that prompted inventive solutions. One such instance involved the use of period-accurate cars borrow wood from local residents, seamlessly integrating the production into the genuine ambience of the 30s Midwest setting. This resourcefulness not only enhanced the film's realism, but also showcased the collaborative spirit among the filmmaking team. The meticulous attention to detail extended to the costumes, with costume designer Polly Platt sourcing authentic 1930s clothing from various sources. Tatum O'Neill's wardrobe in particular became a talking point, showcasing the dedication to period accuracy that ultimately contributed to the film's visual richness. In the end, Paper Moon became a cinematic gem, 
not just for its compelling storyline, but also for the fascinating stories that unfolded behind the scenes. The interplay of familial dynamics, creative choices, and unexpected challenges created a tapestry of experiences that enriched the film's legacy. Peter Bogdanovich, initially skeptical of any critical or financial success, eventually took on the 1973 movie Paper Moon at the urging of his estranged wife, Polly Platt. Despite their strained relationship due to Bogdanovich's affair with Sybil Shepard, Platt believed in his suitability for the project. Although she initially declined to serve as the production designer, Platt eventually agreed under the condition that Shepard would not visit the set. In a memorable picnic scene, actress Madeleine Kahn hesitated to deliver a vulgar line but relented for a single take, which made it into the final film. Director Bogdanovich's persuasion and Kahn's genuine embarrassment after uttering the line added authenticity to the moment. These insights into the making of Paper Moon provide a glimpse into the complex dynamics and behind-the-scenes decisions that shaped the film. Bogdanovich's initial reservations, personal relationships, and on-set negotiations underscore the intricate process of bringing this cinematic work to life. Tatum O'Neill made history in this film, clinching the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress at the age of 10, an achievement still unmatched as of 2023. Her victory surpassed Linda Blair, her contender in The Exorcist, by four years, securing her place as the youngest Oscar winner in a competitive category. However, director Peter Bogdanovich later acknowledged a misstep, admitting that O'Neill should have been recognized as best actress in a leading role instead of supporting. This revelation brought attention to the remarkable nature of O'Neill's performance. Interestingly, Bogdanovich sought counsel on the film's title dilemma from his mentor, Orson Welles. Unconvinced by the novel's title, Eddie Prey, and uncertain about Paper Moon, Bogdanovich turned to Wells. In response, Wells endorsed Paper Moon with such conviction that he suggested releasing the title alone, emphasizing its strength. These anecdotes provide insights into the unconventional journey of this cinematic work, marked by Tatum O'Neill's record-breaking achievement and the title deliberations, revealing the intricate decisions that contributed to the film's unique character. In one notable sequence of the film, Addy and Mose engage in a prolonged, one-take argument inside a car about running out of Bibles. Peter Bogdanovich, the director, revealed that this challenging scene, shot on a one-mile stretch of road, consumed two days and required 39 takes to achieve perfection. The location's proximity to a modern part of town added complexity, as any mistake meant turning around and redoing the entire sequence. John Hillerman, tasked with portraying both the bootlegger and his brother, the sheriff, faced a unique challenge. He intentionally gained weight for the bootlegger role and had only a few weeks within the shooting schedule to shed it for the sheriff's character. This quick transformation showcased Hillerman's dedication to his dual roles in the film. Following the film's success, an attempt was made to extend its narrative into a TV series titled Paper Moon, featuring Jodie Foster. However, this venture proved unsuccessful in capturing the essence of the original film. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the meticulous efforts and challenges faced by the cast and crew during the production of the movie, offering a glimpse into the intricate process behind the creation of this cinematic work. Orson Welles, a close friend of the director, played a significant, uncredited role in shaping Paper Moon's cinematography. Wells advised shooting black and white photos through a red filter, enhancing image contrast for a distinctive visual impact. Madeleine Kahn expressed dissatisfaction when Tatum O'Neill won the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for Paper Moon. Kahn argued that O'Neill deserved the Best Actress Award, citing her own role as the supporting actress. This controversy highlighted the evolving norms in award nominations for young actors. Some insiders speculated that Peter Bogdanovich meticulously crafted Tatum O'Neill's acclaimed performance. The director's pursuit of a seemingly effortless natural quality led to extensive takes, sometimes reaching 50 for certain scenes. Despite critical praise, Bogdanovich later admitted that working with O'Neill proved to be one of his most challenging experiences. These behind-the-scenes details shed light on the collaborative efforts and challenges faced during the making of the film. Orson Welles' influence on cinematography, debates over award nominations, and Bogdanovich's unconventional methods all contributed to the unique character of Paper Moon.
In the production of Paper Moon, the cigarettes used by Totem O'Neill were an unconventional choice. They contained no tobacco, but were crafted from lettuce, causing discomfort for the young actress. The use of lettuce cigarettes, despite its nauseating effect on O'Neill, added a unique element to the film's authenticity. Before settling on the cast, director Peter Bogdanovich engaged with Ryan and Totem O'Neill at their Malibu residence. An amusing encounter unfolded when Ryan suggested a beach exercise routine. Totem's refusal, based on Bogdanovich's hesitance to go shirtless, amused the director, leading him to finalize her for the role, stating she'll do. Given Totem O'Neill's youth and lack of acting experience, Bogdanovich took a distinctive approach. Concerned that showing her rushes might make her self-conscious, he opted not to share footage of her performance, showcasing his unique strategy in guiding a novice actress. These offbeat details, from lettuce cigarettes to an unconventional casting decision and a directorial strategy, offer intriguing insights into the distinctive aspects of Paper Moon's production. Each choice, whether in props, casting, or handling a young talent, played a role in shaping the film's character. Originally slated as Addie Prey with Paul Newman and daughter Nell Potts, directed by John Huston, and in color, Paper Moon underwent significant transformations. Adapting from the book, Addie's age reduced to nine for Totem O'Neill, events were amalgamated, and the novel's last third, involving their ascent as con artists, was omitted. The setting shifted from the southern backdrop to midwestern Kansas and Missouri. Production designer Polly Platt discovered Ryan O'Neill's seersucker suit had been worn by George Raft in a previous film. Notably, the suit was among Paramount's costumes, adding a touch of cinematic history to Paper Moon's wardrobe. These alterations from casting changes to narrative adjustments showcase the dynamic shifts that shaped Paper Moon into the film we recognize today.